A mere 67 words changed the course of history forever. The infamous Balfour Declaration was described by a British journalist as one nation solemnly promising a second nation, the country of a third. British Foreign Minister Arthur James Balfour provided his imprimatur on this Zionist drafted document on November 2nd, 1917, the final draft of which read as follows, quote, his majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country." End quote. Now, the Zionist movement needed a great power to aid them in achieving its settler colonial vision. The founder of political Zionism, Theodore Herzl, did not receive backing from the Ottoman Empire at the time. So, the Zionist movement spearheaded by Chaim Wiseman elicited this promise from the British Empire. Now, aside from the dismissive, derisive, and illegal nature of this declaration, it also contradicted prior promises from the British Empire. For instance, the infamous Sykes-Picot Agreement in 1916, which carved up the Middle East between the French and the British into respective spheres of influence. Palestine was to remain an international zone. However, as the Hussein McMahon correspondence came into play, the British promised the Sharif of Mecca Arab independence in the Levant, including Palestine. But alas, Arab independence was never realized and Palestine's 1400 years of Islamic rule came to an end in 1917 when the British occupied the land. Now the British didn't want to deal with the structural and political complexities of direct annexation of Palestine. Their main concern was victory in World War I. But they needed a Zionist entity to do the dirty work under their protection. And that seemed very attractive. Now, at the time of the declaration, Jews made up approximately one-tenth of the entire population. And the indigenous Palestinians were dismissed as the other, and as the text says, as non-Jews. Their national identity of Palestinian and their ethnic origin of Arab were both intentionally omitted from the declaration. Now, why was that? Because Orientalism was a key element of the Balfour Declaration. Balfour himself said two years after the declaration that the four great powers are committed to Zionism and Zionism, be it, be it right or wrong, good or bad, is rooted in age-long traditions and is of profounder import than the desires and prejudices of the 700,000 Arabs who now inhabit the ancient land. National and political rights were reserved to the Jewish people alone and only civil and religious rights were given to the non-Jews, that is, the majority of the population. Now, this Orientalist viewpoint did not begin nor end with Balfour. In fact, Winston Churchill said in 1938 that, quote, I do not admit that the dog in the manger has the final right to the manger, even though he may have lain there for a very long time, end quote. Not only was Orientalism a key element underlying the Balfour Declaration, but anti-Semitism as well. Yes, anti-Semitism was a core element of the Balfour Declaration. There was virulent anti-Semitism in Europe leading up to the Balfour Declaration. The British experienced a large influx of Eastern European Jewry fleeing persecution. Interestingly, Arthur James Balfour himself, as British Prime Minister in 1905, signed the Aliens Act, which was the 20th century version of the Trump Muslim ban, except this was a Jewish ban. The British government saw the incoming Jews as undesirables and pursued a policy to curb Jewish immigration. History shows that the gains of Zionism necessitated the existence of anti-Semitism. The Zionist movement used rather than combated anti-Semitism to their advantage. The Balfour Declaration was the seed that blossomed into the settler colonial state known as Israel. 
The sad truth is that in today's media, the oppressed, the dispossessed, and the occupied Palestinians are viewed as the oppressors, the dispossessors, and the occupiers. The Balfour Declaration was the original sin that paved the way for the Palestinian catastrophe, known as Al Nakba. My name is Tariq Khalil, Education Coordinator for the American Muslims for Palestine.